I heard a story not too long ago about a, a woman, a young woman, who was asked to share about a, um, a learning experience or a hard, learning, a hard life lesson that she learned one time. And she tells a story of when she was 12 years old and shared a room with her sister who was 15. Her older sister and her mom were having an argument one day about an outfit that the older sister wanted to wear that the mom felt was inappropriate. And so they came into the bedroom and they're yelling and screaming and the younger daughter's watching the whole thing and they're yelling at each other and uh, it started to escalate and the older sister started to say really disrespectful things to the mom. And so she threw out this really disrespectful zinger to the mom and mom slapped the older sister. And the older sister slapped the mom back. And the little sister said she swears she saw her mom's head spin around 360. And her mom left the room and came back swinging a belt over her head. And don't panic, my friends, in, in the 70s, that was good parenting. <laughs> swinging a belt over her head, and the 12-year-old said she got under the bed because she knew it was going to be a bloodbath. And she didn't want to watch, and she didn't want to get caught in the crossfire. And she said that was a valuable life lesson to her because it made her realize that words and actions can cause someone to become a monster, someone otherwise loving. And so it made her think about it before she strikes somebody with words or actions. I think that's an important uh, lesson for all of us, and we can all learn from that. And, uh, and if you think about it, that is very, very true. There is something about violence. There is something about certain actions that cause things to escalate. Haven't you seen that in a movie where somebody, they'll be in a bar and somebody will punch somebody, then somebody else punches, and then somebody else comes in, and next thing you know, it's a giant war, and they've destroyed the bar, right? And all of us have those little things that kind of trigger. We've talked and joked about losing our religion in traffic when someone cuts us off, and it brings out the worst in us, and so we'll cut them off. Tell the truth, you do it. What about when someone cuts you in line? Don't you, you, you end up wanting to, you get, you get so angry at them and you want to lash out at them. They mistreated me, I want to mistreat them back. I love that movie, well I don't really love it, but that movie Jingle All the Way about Black Friday. I'm kind of glad that they have online shopping now, but Black Friday where some, they're tug of warring over something and it, it becomes anarchy, it becomes a fight over this piece of mer, a, a toy that's, that everybody wants. Insult causes violence. Violence leads to more violence and things just escalate. An action and then a reaction ends up in chaos. And it's a pretty common condition. You know, we've been talking about Christian character for the fat past few weeks, and we're actually going to wrap up that series today. And we've talked about how all of the character traits that we talked about, the, the, um, everything from from courage to endurance and self-discipline and vision all leads and builds us towards love. And then we talked about love being tenderness and valuing other people, but the willingness to say tough things and do tough things and fight for the relationship. Last week we talked about being willing to give of yourself and sacrificial love. It all culminates this week in just plain radical love. Love that rather than react as expected and react to lash out would react unexpectedly, unexpectedly and radically with love and kindness even when culture says, oh, you have every right to punch them back. But Jesus would say, let's, let's react radically and let's react with kindness. And we're going we're gonna, to uh, talk about that today. So we're going to look at Matthew. We're going to look at Jesus' words in Matthew's gospel. <clears throat> This is in chapter 5, and this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. And we're going to start in verse 38 and read through verse uh, 34 or 44. Hear these words of Jesus. You have heard that it was said, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your cloak as well, or your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. 
Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Holy God, as we get into and try to understand this word and this teaching from Jesus today, Lord, we ask that only your voice would be heard, that you would open our hearts and minds, that we might hear, process, receive, and more importantly, that we might respond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Jesus starts this, and he's, throughout the Sermon on the Mount, we've talked about it just recently a little bit about how Jesus said, you have heard it said, in other words, the world will tell you, and even religious leaders at this time would have told you, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. If somebody hurts you, you have the right to hurt them back. That's culture. That's the culture we live in. If somebody slaps you, slaps them back. If somebody disagrees with you, not only do you disagree with them, you cancel them. You destroy them altogether on social media. How dare they disagree with you? How dare they say something bad about you? And so we, we live, if somebody hurts you, get revenge. That's what the world tells us. That's very, very celebrated. That's why, and it's popular, that's why the cat fight videos on social media are so, so popular. That's why we've talked about the mic drop, where somebody just tells you off and drops the mic. We love that, because they don't get to say something back. The world will tell you, eye for an eye. The world will tell you if somebody does something to you, hurt them right back. And Jesus said, but I tell you, respond differently. I say, let's do something radically different. And then he gives us some examples of what he means by offering something radically different. First thing he says, if somebody smacks you across the face, turn the other cheek. And I want to offer to you that I don't think Jesus is saying, first of all, a smack across the face is kind of an ultimate insult, especially in biblical times. To smack somebody across the face is almost like spitting in their face. It's not only striking them, it's demeaning them. It's, 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 it's assaulting their, their identity. And it's, and it's really demeaning, it's humiliating for someone to smack you across the face. And so what Jesus is saying here, if somebody humiliates you, if somebody lashes out to you, if somebody is, does something highly offensive to you, turn the other cheek. And I don't think that what Jesus is saying here is let them hit you on one side and then turn the other cheek so they can hit you again. I don't think that's what he's saying. I think what he's saying is show them a different side. Give them a different perspective. Instead of smacking them back, instead of responding with anger or aggression, show them a different perspective. Don't show them your human side where everybody says it's okay to lash out. Show them your Jesus side. Imagine you have your human side that really wants to hit back, and you have your Jesus side who says, you know what, I love this person with tenderness. This person, as ugly as they are being right now, is created in God's image. This person who's being so mean right now is also valued by God. This person who is hurting me, God loved him or her so much that Jesus was willing to die on the cross for them. That's how Jesus would respond. That's the other cheek. That's the Jesus side of yourself. And that's radical because it goes against our nature. That's why tender love has to come first because we can't do that if we can't value other people and get ourselves to just stop for a minute and see that person not as an attacker, but as a person loved by Jesus, created in God's image. Turning that other cheek is offering something, a different perspective, other than the expected violent or angry or lashing out reaction. Turning the other cheek is turning and doing what Jesus would do. Jesus, who was beaten, spit on, stabbed, crowned of thorns, crucified on a cross, and looked down at his attackers and said, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they do. That's the other cheek. That's the other cheek that Jesus is talking about. Show them a different reaction. Show them a different side of yourself. That's what he means by turning the other cheek. And then Jesus said, let me give you some more examples. Go even a step further. 
Go beyond the minimum. He says, if somebody wants to take your tunic or your, your shirt, that's the undergarment that the people in those days might have had two or three undergarments. It would be a tunic, a long robe. Uh, we would today call it a shirt. Uh, and they would have a couple of undergarments, and then they would have a coat. And so a lot of times when people were borrowing money or they were taking poem payment, they would say, I'm going to take this shirt or your undergarment, this tunic of yours, as collateral for you to come and then work this off or pay this off. That was a very common practice. And it was okay because people had a couple of those. It was actually against the law for you to take someone's outer garment or their cloak or their coat because that was also their blanket. And it would get freezing cold at night in that desert climate, and so to take someone's uh, cloak or outer garment uh, really was a hardship to them, and they only would have one of those. And so that was actually against the law. So what Jesus is saying here is if somebody wants your inner tunic uh, as collateral, offer them your cloak. Offer them your safety, your comfort. Offer them something that the, is beyond even what the law requires of you. This is sacrificial love. I will be cold tonight to show you that I'm good for this and that, I can, that you can trust me. And I'm not worried about you taking advantage of me because that's what he's saying. If somebody's trying to take advantage of you, give them more. Give them more. Go a step beyond what, what expectations are. That's radical. That's, that's beyond even the law. And Jesus said, you know what, let's go even a step further. He says, go beyond do something radical, turn the other cheek, and then he says, go an extra mile. Now, back in those days, a Roman soldier, you know, it was Roman occupation. Uh, the Romans were, were, uh, had invaded Israel, had occupied Israel, and so the Israelites were being very oppressed by the Roman government, and it was uh, perfectly legal for a Roman soldier to come to any Israelite and say, hey, go with me and carry my stuff. And you had to drop what you were doing and pick up all their stuff and go with them. But the law said that they could only make you go for a mile. And so sure enough, if that happened to you and you got impressed into duty for that, you would have to pick up this Roman soldier's stuff no matter what you were doing and what you were busy with, and you would have to follow them for a mile. And most of the time, the Israelites would then drop the stuff, spit on it, kick dirt on it, and walk away. That's what they did they, because they were angry about it, and that was their one way of lashing back. Jesus says, don't do that. Not only do you carry a stuff for a mile, go an extra mile. Take it that extra mile. Show him that, you know what, I'll do what I have to do with you, but I'm going to do this out of just kindness, just because I just want to help. Nobody does that. That's radical. I love, one of the things I really loved about working for Young Life, and one of the reasons I think it's such a good ministry, is they have so many little things that they do to live out biblical principles and to help people, uh, help young people understand the love uh, of Jesus. And one of the things that they did at camp is that they would have the entire camp staff meet the buses, and the kids would get off the buses, and they would carry all of their luggage to their cabins. And not only to their cabins, and I'm going to tell you, these mountainous places, many times those cabins were over the river and through the woods and up the hill, and they would carry all their luggage. You know, think about high school girls. It was a lot of luggage. They would carry all of their luggage to their cabin, and then they would even carry it beyond the door of their cabin. They would take it all the way up to their rooms, which were oftentimes on the third floor of these, of, and it was stairs. And they would do that, and it would be the whole staff, even the keynote speaker at times would do that. You'd see that. And it was amazing to these kids because later on in the week they would see, oh, my gosh, that's the guy that carried my, my luggage, and he's the big G's. That was reflective. That's the love of Jesus. That's going the extra mile. That's demonstrating to people God loves you so much that he'll go the extra mile for you. He's here to take care of you, to carry your burdens, and to love you and provide for you. That's a biblical principle being show, played out. So Jesus is saying, respond differently. Show them something different. Go beyond the minimum. Matter of fact, go the extra mile. That's radical love. Now why? Why in the world is that important? Why in the world would that be effective in the world? Well, first of all, the world needs something to diffuse the chaos and the anger. And something about turning the other cheek and going a little extra and not lashing back, responding radically, diffuses the tension. You know, when somebody says to me, you want a piece of me? 
Well, no, I don't. Wah, wah, wah. Right? Right? Somebody punches you, expecting you to punch them back, and you go, all right, see ya. Okay, I forgive you. All of a sudden, there's no reaction. There's no escalation. Instead of an escalation, there's diffu- it's just diffused. It just peters out. Not only that, when a person lashes out at you and expects you to respond, they have the power. They've hurt you. They're controlling your behavior. And if you respond, you're giving them the power. If you don't respond or you respond differently, now the power flips. Now, all of a sudden, they feel weird because they hit you and you didn't hit them back. Or they said something ugly and you said something kind. That's radical. It not only diffuses the situation, it kind of blows their minds. It's crazy. There was a story, I read a story this week, of an African tribe where if somebody murdered a a family member, the, the, the person that was guilty of that would then, the family had the right to then take them out into the middle of the ocean or the middle of this body of water and drop them and just leave them there. And so they could either leave them, to, they had a choice. They could either leave them to drown or they could save them. And uh, sociologists did studies on this and they discovered that the families, and it really was a matter of, okay, if we let them drown, then justice have, has been served. And yet, then that family kind of ended up feeling guilty. And, and they, they never were at peace after that. Whereas if they saved that person, then justice was served through forgiveness and grace. And that person was essentially uh, not an eye for an eye. It was, we'll save your life even though you took one of our lives. And that created a positive, a, a positive situation and a positive relationship and positive growth in both of those, both the family and the guilty person. Uh, sociologists in America have said they see the same thing with executions. Family members who witness an execution oftentimes deal with a huge amount of guilt. Because now, uh, instead of this other person being guilty of a murder, now they feel guilt. They, 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 the guilt has come on them. And so their transformation happens, but it's in a very negative way to them. And see, that's the key. Grace and kindness and radical love has a transforming power on the person who has attacked, on the person who has done wrong. When you respond with love and kindness in a radical way, that affects them powerfully. You know, one of my favorite movies and stories and plays is um, Les Miserables. In the story of Les Miserables, Jean, Jean Valjean, uh, has, he stole a ro- loaf of bread when he was younger to feed his family, and, uh, and he spent all these years in prison, and he gets out of prison, and he has no earning power, nobody will hire him, and so he's still hungry, and he's homeless, and he ends up uh, running into this bishop who welcomes him, him into his house and gives him food and shelter for the night, and in the middle of the night, Jean Valjean steals the family silver and runs away. And sure enough, he's caught and picked up by the authorities. They bring him back to the bishop. And the bishop shockingly goes, oh, my gosh, we gave him this as a gift. And I'm so glad you came back, Jean Valjean. You forgot the candlesticks. And he takes the candlesticks and put them in the bag. And he says, no, this was a gift. We gave them to our friend Jean Valjean. And so I'm glad you got this. And we, God bless you, Jean Valjean. And the whole rest of the story is about how Jean Valjean was transformed by that experience and then wanted to live out his life as a person worthy of that kindness and that grace. And so he became a person who lived with radical love of being kind to other people. Jean Valjean was transformed by the experience uh, of of the, the love of God with this bishop. We saw the same thing happen on the cross when Jesus called out, Forgive them, Father, they don't know what they're doing. The Roman soldier himself said, surely this is the Son of God. A transformation occurred. See, when people see Jesus shining through you, that encounter with Jesus, with the character of Christ, makes a difference in their lives and in their world. Not only does it make a difference in their world, it makes a difference in your world, my friends. I can tell you, if you want to know what Christ is like, live out Christ's character. Because when you live in loving kindness radically with other people, all of a sudden you have knit yourself to the heart of God and you can feel what God feels. 
and you experience what God experiences. And that will change who you are as a person when you start to understand the heart of God. Try it. Just try it. You know, this is why Christian character is so important, my friends. Because we live in a world that needs transformation. And we can't make a difference in that world unless we allow Christ to transform us as well. But when we let the power of Christ come into our lives and take over and transform us into people who are Christ, who are like Christ, who live out the character and love of Christ all the time, that makes a difference in the world. And the world certainly needs it. It takes courage to step into a relationship with Jesus and admit that you need him. It takes vision to see where God might be leading you and what he wants to do. It takes self-discipline to turn off your human side and embrace and partner with God to transform you into more of, like, of Jesus' character. That also requires perseverance. Let's keep on swimming. Endurance. Most of all, it requires, and it leads to love, compassion, toughness, sacrifice. And that is radical. And it's only in that radical love that the world can be changed, now and for eternity. That's, what Je- that's how Jesus lived. That's who Jesus loved. That's who Jesus was. That's how he loved. He loved the world so much that he was willing to suffer and die, hang on a cross, and still forgive people and still love people. He did that for us. He did that for you. Let's allow him to transform us, and let's do that for the world. The world needs to experience Jesus. We can be the reflection of Jesus in the world. Who are you when no one's looking? Are you the character of Christ? Let's pray. Lord God, we want so badly to be the people you want us to be and need us to be. And so we ask that you would enter in, give us the courage to follow you, transform us from the inside out, help us to be people who live out radical love, change the world for eternity. We surrender to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.